Lesson 8, Tic-Tac-Toe. To follow along with this lesson, download the project from the top of our lesson page at zoax.net. For this game of Tic-Tac-Toe, we make the following assumptions. Player 1 goes first and uses the left mouse button to place X's. Player 2 goes second and uses the right mouse button to place O's. For this lesson, we created a project by the same method that we used in Win32 Lesson 1, except that we called the project Tic-Tac-Toe. From there, we will go over the changes that we made to create our game. Our main code file is tic-tac-toe.cpp, which holds our global variables. At line 16, we have a marker enumeration that is used to define what is in each board square. At line 24, we have a global variable to define whose turn it is, player 1 for X and player 2 for O. In lines 25 through 28, we use a 2D array of markers to define the game board. Just below this, at line 29, we use a constant to specify that the width of a square on the board is 200 pixels. Unlike the game loop version from C++ Console Lesson 9, messages drive this Win32 version of Tic-Tac-Toe. We explain the message loop and messages in Lessons 2 and 3. The message events that are recognized are left clicks to place X's, right clicks to place O's, and selecting new game from the menu to reset the game. To add our new game menu selection, we used the method from Win32 Lesson 5. We added line 43 to the .rc file under the file heading. Then we added this preprocessor definition at line 13 of the file resource.h. Lastly, we have a handler in the file tic-tac-toe.cpp. This handler is inside the winproc function and calls reset game and then invalidate rect to repaint the window. Reset game is a function that simply sets the board squares to blank and sets the player turn back to player 1. For mouse click events, we have the WM L button down handler and the WM R button down handler, which we covered in Win32 Lesson 7. Since these handlers are very similar, we will only explain the first one. Looking at this handler in WinProc, we see that it calls place x to try to place an x on the board. If the function successfully places an x, the player turn is set to player 2. Otherwise, we pop up a message to notify the player of an invalid move. Afterwards, we repaint the window. Looking at our place x function, we see that it extracts the mouse click location in pixels and divides that by the size of a square in pixels to get the location of the click on the 3x3 board. Then we check that it is player 1's turn, that the click is in bounds, and that the click square is empty. If the check is successful, we change the board square to x and return true to indicate a valid move, otherwise we return false. For our last handler, we have our WM paint handler, which repaints the window. This first draws the black lines of the board by calling the draw board function. Then we loop over the board squares and draw the x's and o's on the board. Next, we check for game ending conditions. First, we call has won to see whether anyone won. If so, we pop up a message to indicate the winner. If there's no winner, we check for a draw by determining whether or not the board is full. If the board is full, we pop up a message to indicate a draw. In the event of a win or draw, we reset the game and repaint the window. The draw board, draw x and draw o functions that we called use code that is very similar to the code from Win32 Lesson 4. Draw board draws two vertical lines and two horizontal lines. Draw x draws two cross lines, and draw o simply draws a circle. The has one function is very similar to our check in C++ Console Lesson 9. We check for two wins through the upper left corner, four through the center, and two through the lower right. Finally, we have our board full function, which simply checks whether the board has any blanks. This concludes the lesson.